So we're going to go through the six uh, with a little more detail now. Next, please. We had altered states, meditative peak plateau. So we want to char characterize all, all of the different states as best we can and get them on the table. Next, please. Creativity, invention, intuition are always the, often the results of these different trans states. The benzene molecule is a classic example that was discovered in a dream in the 19th century before it was verified in like the 1920s or 30s. The key thing to remember with states is that they're temporary. They come and they go. With the multiple intelligences, if you can't see it down here, there's five areas, I'm sorry, four areas that are listed here. There's up to two dozen. There's been a lot of research done in the last 50 years trying to map the interiors and how they unfold in stages. The basic idea is that down here we all begin at stage one. At, you know, how many infants do you know were able to fly a space shuttle, compose a symphony, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? That would be miraculous. Now, there are mythic tales of that in the different religions. Lao Tzu was born 900 years old and speaking, and Buddha, the Buddha was spoke right out of the birth canal, and so on and so forth. We tend to think these are, are these fact or fiction? Well, they're both, actually. <laughs> There's a color scale that we use based on the chakras, starting with infrared and going up, which I like, to, to help map these. And the idea is that as we go up this axis, increasing complexity, increasing density, increasing manifestation in framework one terms is happening. Next, please. The characteristic with the levels is that it's a permanent acquisition. Next, please. So this is an example in just physical quantum terms. You can look at quantum fields. They group into molecules, which turn into galaxies that create suns, that then create stardust that form planets and, and form us, according to the modern and postmodern science that we're aware of. Here's a stage of seedling, sapling, tree, infant, child, adult. Next, please. A reminder, these are only framework one constructions. Again, we're not saying this is how framework two works, three or four. But we are acknowledging those exist. Next, please. Seth's sense of innate violation in the nature of personal reality, the moral line. The moral is a charged word. We think of church and, and more mythic or pre-modern definitions of this word. But it develops in stages also. And the stages start with, think of terrible twos that we call egocentric. Me, 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 the seagulls in Finding Nemo. <laughs> the next one, ethnocentric. Now I can relate to my family, my tribe. But the group over the hill are infidels, and they can eat shit and die. <laughs> Still us. But, but there's motion from me to us. And then a more world-centric. And these are just generalizations to ballpark the general flow here, all of us. And the American Constitution is an example of world-centric thinking, inalienable rights for all citizens under a social contract. It's a very highly evolved document, morally speaking. And there might be one more. Nope. OK. All levels. I wanted to talk about the nature of hierarchy because it's a charged word in our community and we have a lot of baggage that we associate with the word. So I want to define how I'm using the word hierarchy in relation to integral theory, the integral approach. We talk, we've been talking about, I've been talking about natural or actualization hierarchies. So far, the examples I've given map to everybody's experience so far. Maybe some of you would challenge some of those. But these are different examples of, in physical terms only, physical matter. When a biosphere, biological sexual reproduction occurs, the prokaryotic cells are the simplest cells. There's no nucleus, but they have a membrane in their life cycle. We see seedling, sapling, tree, etc. The part of these flows here, in framework one terms, is linear. It features a not a but not vice versa direction in time. We're also recognizing that there is nonlinearity. Okay, and this is paradoxical. Integral theory is attempting to deal with paradox all over the board in many different ways. So this these levels, these developmental levels are asymmetrical. 
there are more quantum fields than there are cells in the physical, let's just take the physical cosmos for, imagine, for a moment and imagine all the galaxies, clusters of galaxies, the billions and billions of galaxies and stars. Just qu if we quantify that, there's much more of that around than cells. Wherever there's bi biological life in the physical universe, there are fewer numbers of cells. Where we have biospheres or biology, there's fewer trees than there are cells. Now I'm going in increasing complexity here, and certainly there's fewer focus personalities, just in terms of quantity. Now, <laughs> you know, it's eternal, right? How can we really quantify that? But this is just to make the point of, in framework one terms, on our planet today, in practical terms, linear but not vice versa directionality. Now we come down here to dominator hierarchies that are human constructions that oppress, deny, and marginalize. The church, corporate structures that deny and oppress, that dominate. These are things that we want to uh, attempt to deal with <laughs> and improve, right? So there, there is a legitimate criticism of dominator hierarchies in, in the human world. But in, in the natural world, there's all of these natural hierarchies that are out there. And what Wilbur tried to do is make sense. There's all these hierarchies. How do they all fit together? Types are fifth of sixth. We talked about the masculine feminine, Quan Yin, Quan Yang, the Enneagram, Myers Briggs, based on Jung's work. That's my reading, by the way introvert, intuitive, thinking, judging. Seth's Nine Families of Consciousness is a typology. So it, it's, in terms of the levels, it's a horizontal layer. So let's just say a hypothetical center of gravity at stage one. It has nine flavors of intention. Stage two, it has nine flavors of intention. The intent doesn't change as it develops in stages. So we're trying to look at the relationship between these notes. One more maybe or not? Nope. And then the self system, our sixth note, Navigator and integrator puts this all together. Free will, volition comes from this part. We've seen those in the Seth material. This is an interesting connection to Jung's collective subconscious. I think Jane had read some Jung. She channeled Jung. It's in one of those aspects books, actually. I think it's psychic politics. Yep, next. So what ties all of this together? The self system, the types, the levels, the lines and states. What is the big pattern that connects all of these hierarchies? Don't change it yet. <laughs> okay. Because I have a little icon down here that tells me a little interlude's coming. And we're going to put up a, 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 the chart that connects. Um, but again, we've looked at six notes. We reviewed them all and hit it. That's, a, that's the way Wilbur describes it. He uses locus. This part of the integral map is, is Wilbur's greatest contribution, in, in my opinion. He figured out a way to organize all of these natural hierarchies and show how they relate from an individual versus collective standpoint, from an interior and exterior, and how that maps together. We get a four pattern here. The Big Bang, or however you want to attribute the beginning and before the beginning, is in the center. And then in framework one terms, as it starts to evolve, because this is a theory of evolution, not Darwinian survival of the fittest, which is biological. This is a postmodern view of, in framework one terms. 
and it connects all of these. So the two, two important points here. One is that consciousness, uh, that's okay, just feel it. If you, <laughs> I, 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 I can't read it, and you don't need to read it. If, if you can read I, it, we, and its, all quadrants, that's all you need for now. And this will all be available, by the way, on the website. The PowerPoint presentation will be available. You can download it, and we'll get the audio and video up there eventually, too. So you can take time and digest some of this later on. Um, the two points. Consciousness, as we're defining consciousness, is tetra-meshed. Consciousness is all of these things. It's exteriority. It's interiority. It's individual, it's collective, from the beginning, from before the beginning. And just metaphysically speaking, we have the one, of which there is no second, in the non-dual traditions, and then the many, the one and the many. As soon as the many are manifest, and Seth's creation myths of all that is, the agony, the birth agony, as soon as it emanated, the many, these perspectives were born. And it's that simple. Every focus of attention, every aspect has an I, it, we. Even Seth, whatever that gestalt is with all of its focus and all of its immensity, has a sense of an I as a singularity according to this theory. Speculative, but it's rather interesting. We don't know. And the, uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Next. Okay, we got through that. Whew. Six notes, aqua. Adequate interpretation. Epistemology is a fancy word for how do we know what we know? What qualifies evidence of the true? Go ahead, Joe. Next, please. Next, please. And next, please. The integral approach takes a pluralistic view and situates them in relation to each other. It's not about bridging science and spirit. You don't bridge science and spirit. They are their own modalities that relate to each other within this aqual matrix. So each I, and we'll just talk about focus personalities, has these three modalities. Now, this middle one is really important because it looks down at it's interpreting the five senses that we're getting all the time. It's interpreting that and creating, constructing a reality. It's also getting whatever level of inner sense perception, different states, and making sense. So this is a very important area. Uh, but of course, all three are important. And the evidence that we can produce from them is very important as well, and something that we want to consider and learn to consider and become adequate to considering from a dream art science perspective. Next. And of course, Seth's high intellect from the dream art science sessions is a beautiful s blend of intellect and deep intuitions. And I want to read a little something here. He puts the uh, responsibility of discerning truth and knowing on each of us, which is really where it belongs. Truth contains no distortions in this material. With all my best efforts and with yours of necessity must contain distortions merely in order to make itself exist at all on your plane. I will never condone an attitude in which either of you, Rob or Jane, maintain that you hold undiluted truth through these sessions, or absolute truth. Inner data, even this, must make its entry through some distortion. We must always work together, but you must never consider me as an infallible source. This material is more valid than any material possible on your plane, but it is nevertheless, to some degree, conditioned by the camouflage attributes of the plane. The integral map is talking about the camouflage attributes of the plane. Next, please. Fancy word for the art and science of interpretation, postmodern philosophers. Focused on text and language and, and the biases of language and how language, next one, co-creates our experience. Language is very important in, in our reality creation, in other words. And so when we're looking at scripture, the Bible, the Quran, Tantra, Sutra, the Seth material, it comes to us in a language. It's translated 
in a language. It's manifest in a language. So there's one part of it where how clean is that tra initial translation? The Seth material is an exceedingly clean translation. The second part of that, though, is how do I interpret it through my inner senses, my mental senses, my physical senses? There's a, a we space involved, an interjective, intersubjective area of communicating and interpreting. Next, please. Communities of the adequate. Science deals with communities of the adequate. Science is a social process. It's a collective process. You can have a lone wolf who goes off and discovers something, but he or she will inevitably have to come back to their peers, put it up there, fly it up the flagpole, and see who salutes. So science, as it moves forward collectively, is a social, it's a mass event. It's not a singular event. And I just wanted to mention this thing called the Wilbur Combs lattice that is a way of, of interpreting channeling information. We'll look at that in, in a minute. Next, please. Next. 